This is the GIS News for Tuesday, October 29, 2013. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, ECCB says Grenada's economy is growing on the leadership of Dr. Keith Mitchell. Locals showing interest in leasing government estates and government to borrow 10 million U.S. for St. Patrick's Road project. Details after the break. Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell takes to national radio and television this Wednesday night from 8 to deliver an all-important address to the nation following his recent high-level meeting in Washington with IMF and World Bank officials. Prime Minister Mitchell delivers on his promise to report to the people of the Tri-Island State. The Grenadian leader will report on the status of the homegrown structural adjustment program in development with the IMF and other development partners and friendly countries. He'll report also on ongoing consultations with the stakeholders. At a crucial period in this country's economic recovery efforts, Prime Minister Mitchell takes to national radio and television this Wednesday from 8 p.m. to report to the nation. Measures introduced by the seven-month-old new National Party administration since taking up office in February are reaping big benefits for Grenada, according to the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. The latest quarterly report from the ECCB released on Monday said the Grenada economy has expanded in the first half of the year, influenced by developments in the construction and manufacturing sectors. The report explained that construction activity has rebounded in the first half of 2013, recording positive growth for the first time since 2006. According to the ECCB, the expansion in construction was also supported by growth in the public sector capital program, as evidenced by the increased outlays for capital expenditure. The report said public sector construction activity was primarily limited to the maintenance and rehabilitation of roads, schools, and other public buildings. In presenting the 2013 budget in Parliament in April, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell announced stimulus measures to the construction sector by reducing VAT on a number of construction items to 5% from the 1st of May 2013 to December 31st, 2014. These include sand, cement, roofing materials, steel, lumber, and construction blocks. The report suggested that the pace of economic activity is projected to accelerate in the remainder of 2013. The April to June report, which provided reviews of all the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union members, is also available on the ECCB website. People have begun to show interest in the leasing of government estates now that the administration has put out word that it's ready for business. Minister for Agriculture, Lands, Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment, the Honorable Roland Bola, reported Tuesday that government has received about 12 letters of interest from potential buyers. He was addressing members of the media at a post-cabinet briefing. Just to back up a bit, when government assumed office in February this year, it discovered that the financial return on state-owned estates made no sense. Government was receiving 25% less than what was expended. In an effort to get value for money, the administration decided to begin a public-private partnership where four out of the five estates will be leased, not sold. Cabinet appointed a committee led by Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Senator Simon Steele, to oversee the process. Since the committee began advertising in the local papers, asking people to send in their letters of interest, it has received 12 from companies, individuals and groups. Most of them are local. The letters are currently being revised and the committee will soon ask the entrepreneurs to make a formal proposal. The final decision will be made according to the condition guidelines set out by the committee. Is that when listed, those estates should remain under agricultural production. Two, that um, whoever it is, company, group, individual, um, should try as much as possible to keep 
uh, the, the present stock of workers. And um, thirdly, that they should try to increase if they, they let the, the estate become um, more productive, they should increase the labor force. Um, five, that if, if for any good reason um, they would have to sever the relationship with any worker, that full compensation should be given, uh, that they should aim to produce crops that uh, uh, the market, the, the local and regional market, is interested in. Um, there were some other issues about uh, the conditions that government will not be responsible for any um, loan or debt agreement that those persons who lease the estate will get into. It will not be the responsibility of government. So all of those conditions are listed. Minister for Agriculture, Lands, Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment, the Honorable Roland Bola. Minister Bola announced the names of those who have sent in letters of interest. Among them is the Marketing and National Importing Board. Grenada Innovative Farms Limited, and that's one company. Sustainable uh, Nation Foundation Limited, that's what they call themselves. The director is someone by the name of Mr. John Hay. Um, oh, ice cream. King's Ice Cream Limited. <laughs> the chairman is Mr. Lindsay Gillette. And that one seems to be outside of Grenada because I see the address here being Dago Martin. Marketing and National Importing Board, which chairperson is Mr. Rural Edwards. Tufi Hardid Company, which is Hardid Enterprise. Grenada Organic Ch Chocolate Farmers Cooperative, Shadel Na Compton. Coastal Venter Ventures, um, the director is Mr. David Holkoff. Grenada Chocolate Factory, and the director is Edmund Brown. The first one that I called, Grenada Innovative Farms Limited, they did not say whether the persons was directors or not, but I see the names being John Ventu and Lima James. The committee has made a proposal to government that the lands be evaluated per acre to be leased to the potential investors. There may be variations, but... Uh, the committee is proposing that we do not value any of these lands for less than $20,000 an acre, and that the, the lease agreement should, they're proposing that um, the, the, the person's listing should pay 5% uh, of the value per acre, and that the lease agreement should be no less than 20 years. It can be 20 years or more. So these are some of the, the basic proposals. Now, there's not yet a decision, as I said, as to who or, or, or a short listing of the persons because these are just letters of intent or interest and they are now waiting for the substantive proposals for persons to say what they intend to do, how they're going to finance their, their program on the estates and, and so forth. So. Minister for Agriculture, Lands, Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment, the Honorable Roland Bola. Government will approve a bill at Wednesday's sitting of the lower house that will pave the way for the beginning of work on the St. Patrick Road rehabilitation and upgrading project. This is not a new project but has been in the pipeline for quite some time. An act will be tabled before the house to allow the, the Minister for Finance, Dr. Keith Mitchell, to borrow 10 million U.S. dollars for the project. It will come from the OPEC Fund for International Development. We would have a period of up to up to 20 there's a five year grace period before we start repaying the loan and uh, uh, payment will be twice yearly 15th of april 15th of october and the repayment for that loan begins on in the year 2018 uh, and we'll have up to 2032. I hope we'll still be around that time to complete payment for that loan. So hopefully should Parliament give the okay for the Minister of Finance to borrow. The monies are available, we just need parliamentary approval 
And that would mean for the people of St. Patrick, St. Mark's, and I hope St. Andrew's, some temporary jobs in terms of road construction. Minister for Agriculture, Lands, Forestry, Fisheries, and the Environment, the Honorable Roland Bola. Work will be done from Duquesne to Satez and Mount Fendu to Points Field, a total of eight kilometers of road. So it would be roads, drains, and bridges. That's, that's what that is going to take care of. You're watching the GIS News. We'll be right back. and a hurricane plan hear me no man hurricane damage is beyond your control surviving the aftermath is up to you have a hurricane plan it can save your life and your family too prepare for hurricane your hair prepare for hurricane Welcome back to the broadcast. The Committee of Social Partners will hold its third session in its public education series tonight, Tuesday, October 29. It will be held at the Anglican Pastoral Center in Guelph, St. John from 6 to 8 p.m. The topic of discussion will be improving productivity and competitiveness for economic survival. Tonight's panel consists of Mr. Cullen Gilchrist representing government, Terence Moore of the Conference of Churches, Mrs. Anya Brathwaite from the private sector, and Bert Patterson of the trade unions. A representative from the non-governmental organizations will also also be a part of the panel. The Guav leg of the Social Partners Forum is being moderated by trades union representative in the Senate and member of the CSP, Mr. Raymond Roberts. The discussion will be carried live on GIS as well as radio and the internet at gov.gd forward slash TV. The University of the West Indies Open Campus continues to provide Grenadians with the tools to excel in their field of choice. Over 60 students received professional certificates during Thursday's, uh, Tuesday's ceremony at the school in St. George's. It was in the areas of supervisory management, events management, and computer studies. The various courses ran intensely for eight weeks. Program coordinator Claudia Halley says the course is equivalent to three credits and so will help them in pursuing higher degrees. If you want to come in to do something else like a bachelor's degree, this certificate would be used, one, for matriculation. Matriculation is like qualifying. And two, for credit. So hold on to that certificate, put it in a safe place. Remember that you did it because actually these courses are equivalent to three credits. So for the, not the immediate future, but for the future, it's not like next year. I'm also pleased to say that Mrs. Gilbert has been truly motivational in a lot of regards. And one of our students, Terrell Jacasal, is now a registered student in the online program doing, uh, Terrell, is it criminology? Yeah, criminology. Delcia DeCoto of the supervisory management class is satisfied with what the program has taught her and encourages her peers to make the best use of the skills learned. I urge you fellow participants, as you venture into the unforeseen future, to not make this course your final destination of study, but to continue adding to your education and improving yourselves. A special donation was made to the Grenada Cancer Society by the events management class to go towards the treatment of cervical cancer patients. They raised $3,000 through breakfast sales and a gala dinner. It was no easy task. We all know that there were many challenges that we would have encountered along the way. And all in 